At the heart of this tragic tale were the Martins, a seemingly ordinary family living in the coastal town of Seaview Heights. Known for its charming lighthouses and serene beaches, the town was a picture of peace and beauty. But that peace would soon be shattered by a scandal that forever stained its reputation. The Martins' decision to open their doors to a stranger proved to be the biggest mistake of their lives, leading to broken trust, lost lives, and nearly allowing the perpetrator to escape justice. The Martins' Peter, his wife Emily, and their three young children, Max, Clara, and three-year-old Betty seem to epitomize the ideal family. Peter, a successful real estate agent, was admired for his charisma and good looks. Emily, a dedicated schoolteacher, was the embodiment of grace and kindness, adored by her students and respected by her peers. They lived in a beautiful oceanfront home, seemingly enjoying a perfect life. But as the pressures of work and family mounted, cracks began to form in their once solid marriage. Enter Chloe Turner. Chloe, a college student with big dreams and a determined spirit, had recently moved to Seaview Heights. Drawn by the town's tranquil atmosphere and breathtaking views, she saw it as the perfect place for a fresh start, far removed from the chaos of the city life she had known. One warm, breezy afternoon as she wandered the quiet streets, Chloe noticed a for-sale sign in front of a stunning oceanfront property. Intrigued, she approached the house for a closer look. As fate would have it, Peter Martin was there, conducting a showing for a potential buyer. Spotting Chloe by the gate, Peter, ever the charmer, walked over to greet her. Are you interested in the house? He asked, flashing a friendly smile. Caught off guard, Chloe quickly composed herself. Oh no, just admiring the view. It's a beautiful property, she replied. Peter, ever the professional, introduced himself as the real estate agent handling the sale. They chatted for a few minutes, discussing the town, the house, and Chloe's recent movie. The conversation flowed easily, and Chloe casually mentioned her struggle to find a job in the small town. Desperate for work to support her college expenses, she asked Peter if he knew anyone hiring. Peter paused, thinking for a moment. He remembered his wife, Emily, often looking for help with the kids and around the house. My wife's a teacher, and things can get pretty hectic, Peter said we might be able to use some help. Give me your contact info and I'll talk to her. Chloe's eyes lit up with gratitude, and she thanked Peter for even considering her. Later that evening, over dinner, Peter brought up Chloe's situation to Emily, explaining how he had met her earlier that day. Emily, always compassionate, agreed to meet Chloe and see if she'd be a good fit. The following weekend, Chloe was invited over for dinner. The meeting went well. Chloe, with her bright smile and warm personality, quickly charmed the Martins. Emily appreciated her enthusiasm and hired her to help around the house and with the children. It was a welcome relief, providing Emily and Peter with some much-needed respite from their busy schedules. Chloe quickly became a beloved figure in the household, adored by the children and valued by Emily. But for Peter, Chloe represented something more a dangerous temptation. At first, his attraction to her was a guilty secret, something he barely admitted to himself. He admired her youth and vitality, qualities that seemed to be fading from his own life and marriage. Chloe, for her part, enjoyed the attention from Peter. His maturity and confidence were a refreshing change from the immature advances of the boys her own age. As time passed, their interactions, which had started innocently enough, grew increasingly charged with unspoken tension. Both knew it was only a matter of time before something happened between them. And one sultry summer evening, it did. Emily was out of town attending a teacher's conference, leaving Peter and Chloe alone in the house after the children had gone to bed. The sound of waves crashing against the shore provided a soothing backdrop as they sat in the cozy living room. Peter suggested they open a bottle of wine, and Chloe agreed. As the wine flowed, so did their conversation. They clinked glasses in a casual toast, and what began as light conversation soon turned deeper. Chloe opened up about her struggles balancing coursework, part-time jobs, and the pressure of living up to expectations. Her candidness, combined with the warmth of the wine, broke down the final barriers between them. Peter, watching her with a mix of admiration and desire, could no longer resist the pull. The moments stretched, heavy with anticipation, before they gave in to their forbidden desires. Their affair had begun. 
What started as a secret, stolen moment soon spiraled into something far more dangerous. The attraction between them intensified, and they found more excuses to be alone together. For Peter, Chloe offered an escape from the monotony of his life a dangerous thrill. For Chloe, it was intoxicating to be desired by someone as successful and worldly as Peter. But as the affair deepened, the cracks in the Martins' marriage grew into gaping chasms. Emily, though unaware of the full extent of what was happening, sensed that something was wrong. Peter became distant, distracted, and their once happy home began to feel heavy with tension. As their secret became harder to hide, Chloe started to struggle with guilt. She had grown attached to the Martins' children and to Emily, who had treated her with kindness from the very start. The weight of her betrayal began to gnaw at her but the pull of her relationship with Peter was too strong to break. They were caught in a dangerous spiral, hurtling toward an inevitable disaster. That disaster came sooner than expected. One evening, as Peter and Chloe shared a clandestine moment in the house, Emily returned home earlier than planned. She walked into the living room, only to find her husband and the young woman she had welcomed into their lives locked in a passionate embrace. The truth hit her like a tidal wave. Her world shattered. The aftermath was chaos. Emily's betrayal was too much to bear, and in her pain, she threatened to expose everything. Peter, panicking, feared losing not only his family but his reputation. Chloe, consumed with guilt, tried to distance herself, but it was too late. The damage had been done. In the small town of Seaview Heights, news spread fast. The Martins' perfect life was over, and their darkest secrets were now on full display. But what the town didn't know was that the story was far from over. Trust had been broken, lives were destroyed, and a tragedy was about to unfold that would shake Seaview Heights to its core, leaving behind a legacy of betrayal, heartbreak, and irreversible consequences. As Chloe opened up to Peter that night, the honesty and vulnerability in her words struck a chord with him. She spoke about her struggles balancing college, part-time jobs, and the pressures of trying to carve out a meaningful future for herself. Her raw honesty stirred something deep within Peter, and under the influence of the wine and the intimacy of the moment, he found himself confessing things he rarely shared. He talked about his once thriving career in real estate and how, despite his success, he felt a gnawing dissatisfaction. The passion he once had for his work had faded, replaced by the monotonous grind of daily responsibilities. More than that, Peter confided in Chloe about his failing marriage, how the love and connection he had once shared with Emily had eroded over time. Emily, once the center of his world, had grown distant, preoccupied with her career and the demands of their family. As the conversation grew more personal, Peter and Chloe's eyes locked more frequently, their gazes lingering just a little too long. The air between them became thick with unspoken desire. Chloe subtly shifted closer her knee brushing against Peter's, sending a shiver down his spine. The faint scent of her perfume, floral and delicate, began to fill the room. Peter felt an irresistible pull toward her, a young, vibrant woman who embodied everything he felt was slipping away from his own life. Youth, spontaneity, passion. Their first kiss was hesitant, a slow, cautious crossing of boundaries they both knew they shouldn't be crossing. Peter leaned in, his heart racing and Chloe's breath caught as their lips met. That brief kiss carried the weight of all their suppressed desires. Once they crossed that line, there was no going back. The kiss quickly deepened, escalating into a heated embrace as their bodies pressed together, the intensity of their newfound connection overwhelming them both. The room around them seemed to dissolve, leaving only the two of them, locked in a moment of unbridled passion. They stumbled toward the couch, fumbling, hands roaming, as they gave in to the lust that had simmered between them for weeks. That night marked the beginning of their affair, a secret and dangerous relationship fueled by a mix of lust and a desire for something more than their current lives could offer. It was a dangerous game, one that promised fleeting pleasure but threatened to destroy everything they held dear. But in those stolen moments, neither Peter nor Chloe cared about the consequences. They were consumed by a fire that burned brighter than the sun setting over Seaview Heights. Their secret meetings became a regular occurrence. Each encounter was more daring than the last. They met in the house when Emily was out, at motels on the outskirts of town, 
and even in secluded corners of Seaview Heights' picturesque parks. The thrill of their illicit affair overshadowed the reality of their betrayal. And for a time, they were careful, so careful that Emily had no idea of the affair taking place under her own roof. But secrets have a way of surfacing. One afternoon, when Emily was out running errands, their oldest son, Max, came home from school early. He wasn't feeling well and wanted to rest. Quietly entering the house, Max headed to his room, passing the living room when he heard muffled voices. Curious, he peeked around the corner. What he saw made his stomach drop. His father, Peter, was locked in a passionate embrace with Chloe. Max, shocked and frightened, tried to back away without being seen, but Chloe's sharp eyes caught him. She called out his name, her voice sweet, but there was a coldness in her gaze. Max froze in place, unsure of what to do. His heart raced as Chloe, still holding Peter, asked him to come closer. The air in the room felt heavy with tension, and Max hesitated, saying he needed to go to his room. But Chloe wasn't going to let him leave so easily. She moved quickly, grabbing him by the arm. Her grip was like iron. The gentle and kind Chloe that Max had known vanished, replaced by someone dangerous. She threatened him, her voice low and venomous, warning Max not to tell anyone what he had seen. And then she uttered words that chilled Max to the bone she threatened to kill him if he ever spoke of this to anyone. Peter, frozen in shock and shame, tried to intervene, but Chloe hissed at him, her facade of sweetness gone. Max, wide-eyed with fear, nodded quickly, promising to stay silent, tears streaming down his face. Chloe, satisfied with his terrified compliance, released him, and Max fled to his room. Days turned into weeks, and the tension in the house grew unbearable. Emily sensed something was terribly wrong, not just with Peter, but with Max as well. Her once happy and carefree son had become withdrawn and anxious, avoiding eye contact and speaking in hushed tones. Emily's concern deepened, but Max refused to tell her what was troubling him. Meanwhile, Chloe's threat to their son seemed to awaken Peter's conscience. He began questioning everything was this affair worth the damage it was causing. He started contemplating how to end things with Chloe, how to tell Emily the truth so they could work together to remove Chloe from their lives. But despite his growing regret, Peter couldn't bring himself to confess. Every time he thought about it, he faltered, too ashamed to reveal the betrayal that had destroyed their family. Emily, however, was noticing the changes in Peter more and more. His affection for her felt forced, his late nights at the office and sudden business trips raising her suspicions. But she convinced herself it was stress, after all. Peter had been under a lot of pressure lately. Then one fateful evening, the illusion shattered. Emily and the kids were at her mother's house for the weekend when a loud noise broke the stillness of the night at the Martin household. One of their neighbors, Mrs. Caldwell, heard the disturbance and rushed over to the house, her heart pounding with fear. What she found inside was more horrifying than she could have ever imagined. Peter Martin lay motionless in a pool of his own blood, his eyes lifeless, his body still. The sight was too much for Mrs. Caldwell, who let out a piercing scream that echoed through the neighborhood. Within minutes, police and investigators swarmed the Martin household, determined to uncover the truth behind Peter's tragic death. That same night, Emily received a call from the police informing her that something had happened to Peter and she needed to return home immediately. They refused to provide any details, leaving Emily in a state of panic. She packed up the kids and drove home at breakneck speed her mind racing with fear and confusion. She dialed Peter's phone over and over again, but there was no answer. Dread gripped her heart. In desperation, Emily called Chloe, asking if she knew what had happened. Chloe, her voice cool and composed, claimed there had been a disturbance in the neighborhood and that the police had kept her from entering the house. She mentioned that she had been out of town all day and had only just returned. By the time Emily arrived, the nightmare was just beginning to unfold. Emily stood frozen in the doorway, her breath catching in her throat as her eyes fell upon her husband's lifeless body. Forensics hover around Peter, still trying to determine his cause of death. The sight was too much. She collapsed, consumed by grief. Peter had been loved by everyone. Even those who were envious of his success never seemed to harbor real hatred toward him. Who could have done this? The police, respecting her anguish, 
allowed her a moment before gently asking if she could think of anyone who might be responsible. But no one came to mind. Peter had been an ideal man, a loving husband, an incredible father, and a charismatic figure who was always ready to lend a hand. It baffled her. They also questioned Chloe, who tearfully explained she had been out of town taking an exam when the tragedy struck. When the police contacted her college, her alibi was confirmed. Max, Peter's oldest child, was next to be questioned. He denied knowing anything, but the truth weighed heavily on him. He had been carrying a dark secret. Deep down, he was convinced that Chloe had played a role in his father's death. Every time he saw her, dread and anger churned within him, the memory of her past threats burning in his mind. Unable to bear the tension any longer, Max decided to confront Chloe. While Emily was out one evening, attempting to manage the crushing grief that had consumed her life, Max approached Chloe in the kitchen. The air between them was thick with unspoken accusations. His heart pounded, his fear and fury clashing within him. Why did you do it? He asked, his voice low but fierce. I know it was you. You killed my dad. Chloe's expression immediately shifted, her eyes narrowing. She denied everything warning him to be cautious with his accusations. But Max, now steeled with determination, took a step closer, his fists clenched. He issued his own ultimatum, leave, or he would tell their mother about the affair and everything else he knew. Though he wasn't sure if Chloe had killed Peter, he couldn't stand her presence any longer. Suddenly, Chloe's demeanor changed from defensive to menacing. She lunged at Max, but he managed to dodge her. Terrified, he bolted for the kitchen door. In a panic, Chloe grabbed a knife from the counter and chased after him, her footsteps echoing through the house. Max screamed in agony as she plunged the blade into his shoulder, narrowly missing his vital organs. The searing pain was nothing compared to the terror. He collapsed, blood pooling beneath him. His cries for help rang through the house as Chloe, realizing the horror of what she had done, dropped the knife and fled. Emily rushed to Max's side, her heart pounding with fear. She quickly called the police, who arrived swiftly and began their search for Chloe, while paramedics rushed Max to the hospital. His condition was critical, he was losing blood rapidly, and Emily was caught in a whirlwind of despair, unable to bear the thought of losing both her husband and her son. It wasn't long before Chloe was found hiding in a dimly lit alley behind a row of shops. Tear streaked and disheveled, she was brought in for questioning. The mask of innocence she had worn shattered. Under intense interrogation, Chloe coldly confessed to Peter's murder. Her voice was detached as she described how Peter had ended their affair, telling her to leave his life and threatening to expose everything to Emily. Enraged and desperate, Chloe had snapped. When Peter turned his back to walk away, she seized the moment and stabbed him. Emily's devastation was indescribable. The revelation of Peter's affair barely registered in the face of her overwhelming grief. She didn't care about the betrayal. All she wanted was her husband back. But it was too late. The Martin family had been irrevocably shattered, and the once peaceful town of Seaview Heights would never be the same. Max, recovering from his injuries, was haunted by nightmares of that terrible night. Guilt gnawed at him for not speaking up sooner, for not doing more to protect his father. Emily, struggling to hold her broken family together, could see the toll it was taking on him. But Max remained distant, lost in the pain of his trauma. Chloe's trial became the talk of the town, drawing curious onlookers and media attention. On the stand, Chloe's cold, calculated demeanor sent chills through the courtroom. She showed no remorse as she recounted the events leading up to Peter's death. Max was called to testify, his voice trembling as he relived the night he confronted Chloe. His testimony exposed the true nature of her character, painting a chilling portrait of the woman who had torn his family apart. The jury needed little time to deliberate. Chloe was found guilty of first-degree murder, and her sentence was swift and harsh. Justice was served, but the damage had already been done. Emily, Max, and his two younger sisters were left to pick up the pieces of their lives. Their home, once filled with love and laughter, had become a place of unbearable memories. In an effort to heal, Emily decided to sell the house and move the family to a new town, far from the whispers and prying eyes of Seaview Heights. But even as they left the town behind, the scars remained. 
Seaview Heights, once known for its lighthouses and serene beaches, was forever marked by the tragedy. The story of the Martin family lingered in the air, a cautionary tale of hidden secrets and the darkness that can fester beneath the surface of even the most seemingly perfect lives.